The next 10 JRPGs I finished only once and that was more than enough for me. Here's why I'll never beat them again, so let's begin. Number 10. Tales of Fantasia Since I started the first video with a Tales game, might as well repeat with another. Unlike Zestiria though, Fantasia is a very, very dear game to me. It was the second Tales game I ever played and I fell in love with it. Of course, I played the fan translated version on the PlayStation, not the original Super Famicom release or the crappy port Namco localized for the Game Boy Advance. I beat this game many, many years ago and greatly enjoyed its story, characters and music. But even back then, the gameplay felt kinda dated, with clunky controls during battle and quite the annoying exploration thanks to its colossal encounter rate. It was also a bit grindy, especially near the end. Nowadays I feel any version of this legendary first Tales game ever made aged somewhat poorly. I'd love for it to get an HD 2D remake like Star Ocean 2 did. Of course it might look different cause Square Enix owns that graphic engine, but Namco could develop a similar style I'm sure. I'm saying this because I don't think a simple remaster will make me beat it again. I'm never going back to this classic unless it gets remade somehow. Number 9. Valkyria Chronicles 2 As much as I love this series, I can't seem to stop picking on this little black ship. It's a great game and I did enjoy my first playthrough a lot, but to put up with Avon's bad jokes again, annoying personality and the dumbass military school scene he goes through that feels more like a classic high school just doesn't do it for me. It's one of the very few cases where the story and characters kinda ruin the experience. The rest of the games, including Revolution, focus on more mature plots. And sure, they have their fan service and slice of life bits, but this second entry makes it all about that, and it's honestly dumb. Far from one of the worst stories I've seen though, it's still interesting and emotional at times, but the journey itself to get to those very moments is exactly what kills any hope of me playing through its entirety again. Number 8. Cry Machina Of course I'm never beating this damn game again. It certainly was one of the most disappointing games from last year. An indirect standalone sequel to Crystar, an action RPG I thoroughly enjoyed a few years ago, so I was expecting Cry Machina to be just as great or even better. Well, the one thing that got better were the graphics, technically speaking, and the fast-paced action. I played excitedly through it, only to find myself delving deeper and deeper into a broken rabbit hole. The balance in this game on any difficulty setting was ridiculous. Enemies often one-shot kill you for inexplicable reasons. Occasionally though, you one-shot kill them too, also for no apparent reason. You gotta learn how to fight properly here and take advantage of every asset you have since you control multiple weapons at the same time, but that's far easier said than done, as practice never makes perfect here. I don't even understand why I finished this broken ass mess. It's not a bad game, but it's not great either. It's full of gameplay issues, cheap deaths, confusing controls, convoluted mechanics and spikes galore. I made a full review of it in case you're interested to know in full detail my opinion and justifications. This is what happens when you set the bar kinda high for any upcoming game. Number 7. Time. Blah, 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 blah. Number 7. Atelier Risa. I don't have much to say about this game or most other Atelier games out there, except this. Playing a few of them equals playing them all. Since the first one, Marie on the Sega Saturn and PS1, any Atelier game has been the same. Along came the Iris trilogy to change things around and it successfully did, but after a few years, Annie and Rorona showed up to go back to the original formula. I'm not kidding, it doesn't matter which Atelier you pick up, in most you'll play as a lovely airhead, tomboyish, lively girl doing fetch quests. 
Mechanics evolve with each entry, but in the end, it's the same old gathering and synthesis shenanigan. No story is different from the power of friendship trope, and Risa sure ain't any exception. If anything, it's one of the most notorious examples of it. I guess what I'm trying to say is that the large majority of them are great games, sure, and eventually become quite addictive to play, that's true. But another thing that's also true is that, like I've been saying, they feel like the same game over and over again with recyclable plot, protagonist and characters. In conclusion, beating a title like Atelier Risa again makes no sense to me, but I'll always treasure the fun I have during my one and only playthrough. Number 6. Stella Deus, The Gate of Eternity Ah, grindfests. Don't we all love them? I could have picked the large majority of them I've played in my life. Nowadays I don't feel like going through a shitstorm like this twice ever, especially when they don't have a new game plus or difficulty settings. Stella Deus is one of the many crazy examples of a grindfest that's great, but offers little to no replay value. You beat it and that's it, nothing you can do except restart it one day and go through its hellish torture again. I really enjoy this game, don't take me wrong, but it's one of those where strategy alone won't save you. In many games of this kind, tactics and maybe the right class or job would do the trick, right? Even on their level, you can pull through, sometimes even with just the right equipment. Not in Stella freaking Deus! where you need to fight over and over again to get anything from money, skill points and obviously levels. And it's one of those where it takes forever to level up and increase a character's stats. Yeah, it's a brutal hardcore experience, but one very worth playing only once in a lifetime. Number 5. Drakengard 3 To hell with this game! Number 4 What can I say about Drakengard 3 that I haven't already? I absolutely love it, specifically for its story and characters. Hard to see politically incorrect games such as this, especially nowadays, right? But let's face it, the gameplay is quite troublesome and despite only being about a decade old, it didn't age well. Bad frame rate, screen tearing, messy combat, and those god awful dragon missions kill any desire whatsoever I may have to play through this nightmare again. Imagine a remaster of all three games one day, fixing the many technical issues they have. Well, go ahead and fix the controls, camera, and graphical obnoxities this game has, and I'm in. I'll probably beat it again. But the original PS3 release? I'm fine with only one time, but it also has some serious true ending nonsense with one of the most unfair requirements ever to get it. So maybe in reality I never actually beat this game? Huh. Number 4. The Legend of Dragoon this shouldn't be a surprise if you listen to my complaints about Tales of Fantasia. I don't think this classic game aged very well, and it's not only ugly to look at in some areas, but also annoying and frustrating to play. It sure wasn't back in the day when I finished it and loved it. I fell in love with Rose just like everybody and their dad. Well, maybe not my dad, but you get the idea. Although I believe if my dad played this game and saw Rose, he'd agree with me. In fact, one of these days I'll show a picture of her too. This game looks gorgeous on the PS4 and 5 though, and it might just convince me to go play through it again one day after so many years. But it's also kinda grindy, exploration feels weird nowadays, encounter rate is a twisted mess between low and high whenever, and I don't even want to remember the final boss, one of the longest ever with several phases incredibly difficult. Despite all of that, I believe it's a wonderful game, and even if it didn't age very well, it's still worth playing at least once. But I'd rather swallow my words if a remake or proper remaster was ever released than going back to any of its original iterations. Number 3. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 
it doesn't matter how many times I come back to this game in my videos. I'll always have something good to say about it, but also something bad. I actually made two full reviews of it. The first one focused on everything wrong about it, the second one focused on everything right. It's just one of those games that never run out of space to talk about. There's so much to it, hence why both its infamy and popularity. I play through it, but I'll never beat it again. Never mind its story being bombarded with fan service and cheesy jokes, I have no problem with that. Why I'll never give it a second go lies in the fact that its exploration is insanely tedious. That's right, only one damn reason why. Combat, leveling, equipment systems, skill trees and whatnot, you name it, I can both enjoy that again and suffer through that again, no problem. But getting constantly lost in dungeons or areas, trying to find the next point of progress, or even the exit, equals eternal damnation. I simply found going from point A to point B frustrating most of the time, even with the map and the mediocre GPS. All other Cineblade games didn't have this issue, or at least weren't as annoying. I loved my playthrough, and I do recommend this game despite its divisive nature. It was quite the memorable experience for me, and only a man of culture would understand its bizarre compile hard like shenanigans. Number 2 Star Ocean Till the End of Time. This game, well, uh, here's my story with it. When I first beat it back when I still respected Square Enix, I fell in love with it. I distinctively remember the story with all its shocking plot twists and its secret true main character. I just found that idea remarkable and quite daring. For the longest time, this was my favorite Star Ocean game, also with my favorite plot and characters. Along came the dreadful day when I started a second playthrough, apparently having forgotten about it, all its nuances. It was those damn puzzles that drove me mad in the first place that had evoked supreme negative memories within me. I swear if I have to ride this obnoxious, sluggish and atrociously designed beast, I'll throw my copy out the window. If I have to go around and play this jerk-off flute like a freaking idiot to open doors again, I'll throw my copy into the fireplace. And if I have to relearn its convoluted battle mechanics and chaotic controls once again, I'll shoot myself! What a lovely game. Number 1. Dragon Quest XI This is a fantastic game and I think it's a masterpiece. But there's one very simple reason why I'll probably never beat it again. I'll give you the non-spoiler explanation first. Something happens at the end of the main story that makes the journey kinda pointless, that is, unless you delve into the post-game content where the ending can be averted or more like fixed. You know how I feel about true ending bullshit, so of course I'll never go through this again. I love it nonetheless and I strongly recommend it. And now, I'll give you the spoiler explanation. It's a huge huge massive spoiler, so skip to the number you're seeing right now on screen if you want to avoid it. Okay, so in this game, Veronica dies! That's right, that annoying little twerp that very slowly grows on you despite annoying you first. Did I say annoying twice? Anyway, well she freaking dies and there ain't nothing you can do except beat the brutal post game. Haha, <laughs> wanna save the damn lowly? Well, then you gotta suffer through the ginormous grindfest I, the developer, have deliciously prepared for you. No thanks. Why would I go through the game a second time only to watch Veronica die again? And now I know that to save her, I gotta torture myself with a hardcore post-game nonsense? That's right, nonsense! So, yeah, I'll never beat this masterpiece again. What, you thought I'd include Octopath Traveler 2 because I put the first one in the first video? Well, gameplay-wise, this sequel is less grindy and therefore less difficult, so who knows? I might do a second playthrough of it one day. But anyway, those were my picks for this video. What are yours? Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends. See you next time!